Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you because we see you taking care of our pastor. Thank you, Lord, for this. Bless us today. Open our ears, our hearts, our minds to understand the true Christianity and your word, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. Guys, last Sunday of the year, right? What amazing. Well, 2021, it was a kind of a difficult year for a lot of people. I could say that a lot of people struggled a lot in 2021. And we are about to start 2022. Naturally, when a new year is coming, we create a kind of hope of new things to come. Hope that next year is going to be better. This year was hard, was tough, but you know, next year, it's going to be good. But will it be good naturally? Let me tell you one thing. Uh, we are celebrating Christmas. Jesus Christ, God, came on earth as a baby, as a human. And he went through all the atonement to open a door for us, to save us, to reconnect us to God. But the word says in the book of Colossians that all of us who believe in Christ were transported from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his love, son, the kingdom of light. And he came to bring his kingdom on earth, right? So we, as Christians, are the one responsible to spread this new kingdom on earth. We are the one. We are chosen. Do you know that maybe you think that you belong to this world, but we do not. We are living on enemy's field, enemy's territory. There's a war. And we are now on enemy's field. We do not belong to this place. But we're here by now as warriors to glorify his name. Right? To help to save people, to change people's life. We are Christians. We got a mission. We're not Christians just to say, oh, I believe in Christ, I'm saved. No. We are Christians because we receive a mission. Yeah, come on. Glorify God while on earth. Show people how good it is to be a Christian. But when people look at us, do they feel like they want to be like us? They see you and they say, you know, I see your family. That's how I want my family to be. Why that? Because I'm a Christian. I see the way you treat your wife, your husband. I want something like that for me. Why do you do that? Because I'm a Christian. Your work, your life is differently than most of people. Why? Because I'm a Christian. The word of God, when Jesus says that he's sending the Holy Spirit, the word of Holy Spirit is paracletos. It means the one who comes to help us, not to do things for us. Not that he cannot, he's God. But he help us to do things. So, okay, I, I need to do this, Lord. Okay, I'll come with you. I will empower you, I will teach you, I will give you good advice, but you have to move, you have to put your hands on the deck and do something. So, now that the year is coming, there are two ways for each one of us live our life. We can let our life lead us, and day by day, as the, the struggles come, they should come, with, we try to deal with everything. Or we lead our lives to where we want. I usually say that someone that who doesn't know where he want to go anywhere works. Right? I don't know where I want to be, so 
But it's not like that. We have a call. You know, we are ambassadors of Jesus Christ on earth. So how are we going to drive our lives? There must be some meaning for, for me and for you. If I want to, 2022, in December of 2022, when I get there, I want it to be different than it was in 2021. We must do things differently. If I start 2022 just as I started 2021, I can tell you the end is going to be the same. You know, I think the right word would be you reap what you saw. <laughs> right? So I have to change. If I look, I say, oh, this thing did not have, it did not have quite well. I didn't like the way my work was or my family was or my spiritual life was. So I have to do things differently. And we have the Holy Spirit. And I know that sometimes it seems hard. But let me tell you, it's about identity. Identity, who you are, who am I? And the book of John says that we are, we are called sons and daughters of God. Can you believe that? Please stop and picture this sentence with me a little bit. The almighty God, the one who created everything, the one who can do everything, is my father saying that he's going to help me? Oh, wow. I think I should believe on that. Otherwise, I'll start listening lies from my enemy, telling that I am no one, that I'm a failure, that I can do anything. Everything I do go wrong. No. You were born again. Now you are son and daughter of God. Holy Spirit is with you, empowering you, helping you. So let's do differently. You know, uh, if we are Christian and we want to succeed, how we can do that? Because I can, I can share verses with you, but I, today I want to bring something more practical, something that you can really apply on your life. Something that I learned a few years ago and has been working in my life. Uh, Sam, can you put here uh, Proverbs 16, please? Okay, I can wait. Because what I see is struggles will come. Of course, you have difficulties. But believe me, we got everything for us to guide our lives, where we want to go. On Proverbs 16, it says, To humans belong the plans of the heart, but from the Lord comes the proper answer of the tongue. All a person's ways seem pure to them, but motives are weighed by the Lord. I like this. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. Look, where do I want to go? It's according to God's will. Let me check. Let me commit to the Lord. Let, I have the scriptures. Let me go for the scriptures. You know? If someone is telling you, oh, I got something from God for you, but it's against the scripture, please don't jump on that. <laughs> we got the word of God. If I want to do something, is that what I want for my life for 2022 is according to the word of God. Let me pray and listen to God and feel in my heart if it's okay with the plans I have. But first, do I have a plan? <laughs> because if he established my plan first, you and me, we must have a plan. <laughs> if we don't have a plan, it <laughs> doesn't matter. 
And remember, he's our father. On Matthew 7, go there, Sam. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be open. We have access. It's just a matter of going for that. I want to talk to Jesus. I want to pray. I want to go there, knock on the door and open and ask, God, give me wisdom. Put on my heart, what should I do? Help me, Lord, to make my plan in such a way that it will be aligned to your will. Give it to me, Lord. I want to glorify your name this year. But it's not going to be just one prayer. And God didn't tell me anything. Okay, I'll let my life lead me. No, I'll keep knocking until I have the answer. Until I listen to him, I will insist because I want to show him I really want your guidance. I really want your opinion. It matters for me. And I'm going to stay here knocking on the door till you talk to me. Because I want to listen from you, Lord. I want to make my plans according to your will. Can you just put a... Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? What we said, what are we? We are sons and daughters of God. He's our father. What he's saying here is, look, ask me. Because I want to give you good things. <laughs> I want to give you a good life. But you have to ask and follow my advice. You have to walk with me. You know, guys, I have noticed in my life that probably 90% of the troubles I face, I created them. <laughs> right? Of course, the consequences was not that good. Sometimes I said, okay, but the consequence is too hard. It's not for this much. Well, I have control on my decisions and my actions but I have no control on the consequences of my actions. And most of the troubles, I didn't listen to God. I didn't follow his advice. I just did what I want. So now I have to face the consequences. But if I seek him, if I look for him, you know, if I listen to him, he only has amazing things for me and you. Guys, let's make this world differently. You know, you, 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 the, the scripture says that we all are ro royalty of God. We're called to make a difference. I cannot accept a defeat. You cannot accept a failure. You cannot accept a defeat. Do not accept this lie upon your life. It's over. Come on, it's over. You are son of God. You know, put this on your mind and, and swallow to your heart. You are called to be victorious, not a loser. That's what he has for you. But he wants you to listen to him and to make plans according to his will. And work hard to achieve the goal. And then you'll be victorious. On Jeremiah 29, 11, it's a very well-known verse. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call me 
and come and pray. We're talking about relationship here. To me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me. Only once? No. When you seek me with all your heart, I will be found by you, declared the Lord. You want to listen to God? You want to talk to him? You want to make your life aligned to what he wants? Seek with all your heart. Seek is the most important thing you have. It's above everything. Do it. And then I can tell you're going to listen to him. You're going to be much easier to obey. Because sometimes we want to obey God. But if we don't listen to him, what can I obey? <laughs> if I don't know what he's telling me, if I don't read the scripture, if I don't pray, if I don't talk to him, how should I know what to obey? It's not about not being obedient. It's about, it's about not knowing what to obey. So, guys, what I want to share with you is how can we put all of this in practice? How can we operate this for 2022? Years ago, I learned with a pastor friend of mine that, okay, I must have a plan. Let's create a plan for my ear, my life plan. And once I learned that, and we start operating that, my life really, really start coming to the track. And, and I can tell that it has been a very good life. Good fights. Oh, I had good fights. A lot of struggle to fight. That's awesome. Right? But it has been a very good life. So, I make this that you can download from our web page or you can just grab there or send an email we can send it to you this is something's gonna help you and me for the year a small paper alex yes but what you're gonna write here is gonna make the difference i split it in five areas of your life for the year five areas that is so important for all of us. Remember, make a plan. Commit it to the Lord and he will bless your plan. So let's make a plan. Amen. Right? So is the first one I put on here is my spiritual life. The verse that I put in there is, asking will be given to you, seeking you will find, knock and the door will be open to you. How is your spiritual life? Do you want it to be better? I want a mind to be better. So, okay, next year I have a plan. I want to read more in scripture and I want to pray more, you know. That's what I'm going to do. No, 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 it's not like that. How you're going to do it? <laughs> if you have a plan, what is your plan? Let me share something. Last year, when I started a year, my kids, they are 14 and 12. So we decided that it was time for them to read the whole Bible for the first time in their lives. Something that's very important because if this book is a manual for a good life, at least I must know it. Or read it. So, okay, my kids are going to read the whole Bible in a year. Is that a plan? No. That is a goal. The goal is read the Holy Scripture. And the plan. The plan is how we're going to do that. So, we went for a Bible plan on the app that comes, has some videos and some small, uh, a kind of, some verses per day. And during one year, you will read the whole scripture. So, every day, me, Grace, and my two boys, we started that. Because it can be one day only, or it can be day one. You choose. We chose it to be day one. Every day, 
after we read it, we have to write what our comments and start talking to each other. In the beginning, man, it seems for them probably impossible to finish, right? It should not be easy when they went through numbers, <laughs> Deuteronomy. Oh, man, it's not nice books. <laughs> but they went through. So, in the end of December now, we finished the whole Bible. I got the goal. But I had a plan. I put the plan on practice. So today, I achieved my goal in 2021 with them. And then we asked, okay, what are you going to read for next year? You know, they said we can read the Bible again. It was awesome. Good. Let's do it again. But what I'm telling you is, there is a plan. Right? For 2022, I, I, I really can see in my life that I'm too shallow. I have to go deep with the Holy Spirit. Pray more. Have more time with Him. Read more. So I want to, for 2022, pray more. Have more time of me and the Holy Spirit. That is a plan? No, it's a goal. What is the plan? I decided to wake up 45 minutes that earlier than I am awake now. Every day. It's going to be easy. No, I really love to sleep in the morning. I'm not like Pastor Jim. <laughs> you know, for me, the best is about 5.36. Oh, man, it's awesome. I even like to wake up and just to see I can sleep more. Right? <laughs> but my goal is have more time with the Holy Spirit. So my plan is wake up earlier. Right? And I also decided that I must read more. So I start reading more books. I want to read more books this year. So I have an app called Libby where I have access on the library. And I'm going to I'm start reading books. I already read one and I'm on the second now. And I want to keep reading. So this is the plan. So my goal is more intimacy and more knowledge. My plan, read more, pray more, wake up earlier, have time listening. Download audiobooks while I drive. I have to commute every day here from Casa. So what is your spiritual plan? Where do you want to be? Do you think you are in the top of you can be? You reach the best? You're better than Apostle Paul and Peter and everyone? <laughs> I don't think so. So where do you want to be in December 2022? You want to know more about the scripture? Read it. You want to have a better relationship with the Holy Spirit? Pray in time. But just do not say that. Create a plan for you. And write here. Just write. I intend to wake up earlier. From 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. I'm not going to do nothing on Wednesday, Wednesday, uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. Because there will be my prayer time. Or I'm going to read this, this Bible plan that they have, because today is so easy, you can go download the app, they have thousands of plans. But do something, because it doesn't matter how much you want to be better, if you do not make a plan, you'll never be there. And some plans, they have milestones for you to be following up during the year, in such a way that in the end, you can tell you, yes, I got my goal. But if your spiritual life is bad, all the rest is worse. Remember, we don't belong to this world. We are Christian. We have to go further. That's why I put spiritual life on first. Because it's the fourth thing. It's your connection with God. And then... The second one is my personal life. For myself, what do I want? Well, 
Last year, God blessed me, I could achieve a goal. We could buy a house. That was awesome. My personal goal for next year, one of them, I have some, but if I can share one of them with you is, I'd like to go for vacation with my family. So I choose a place and start saving money. Otherwise, I'll never go on vacation. <laughs> so there's a plan. What's your plan? What do you want your personal life? What do you want to happen to you this year? Right? The other one is my family. What do you want to do with your family? How is your relationship with your kids? With your parents? With your brother and sister? How is your family? What can you change? Sometimes you have to be the first one to say sorry. The first one to kick out all the pride and the reasons you have. And be the first one to say, I'm sorry. I don't want to be close to you again. Maybe your relationship with someone in your family is not easy. And you need some help. Because sometimes we cannot do by ourselves. Look for our help. Look for our help on your family issues. But if your family is not good, out of your house, man, everything will be bad. If your house is not the first place you want to be after your work, something is wrong with you. How's your family? Well, Alex, I do not have a whole family right now because I'm uh, single and I'm out of home already. Okay. So prepare yourself for one. And not tell that you should get married right now. No. But prepare yourself to have a family. Understand what are the points. And make a goal for you. With your brother, with your mom, or with your parents, with your daughter, with your son. But just do not accept. Ah, that's the way it is. No, no, no. Remember, you were called to be victorious, not a failure. Do not accept that. Make a plan. Change your life. Your work and is, or is school life for those who's not working. If you're in your work and you want to reach a better place, a better position, prepare for that. Okay. In 2022, I want to reach this point. I want to be a supervisor. So what should I know to be there? Might I, should I do some courses? Should I learn more? How can I improve myself? It's not just want to be there. How can I... Fit myself in the position I want to be. Let me prepare myself. And the same in school. I want a better grade. I want to go to that college. I, I, I just want to be better on this area. So I, how is my plans going to be? I'm going to study more. I'm going to read more. It's all about making plans. This is important. Right? And, and the last one I put here is my ministry. Because we are a church. So, how is your ministry going? God has a call for you. He has given a gift for you. You're going to take our gift with you to the underground? No. He gave a gift to you to be used for him. To be part of the church. And we need you. We need you to help here. Right? When you got here and everything is working fine, it's because someone is doing something. <laughs> But we need you. What is your ministry life? What is your call? You know, I love to see Brad singing. So I said, okay, I'm going to play and sing. That's my call. No, that's not my call. If I go there, you guys will run away. <laughs> so it's not about what I want to do, but what is the call of God for me? What can I do? How should I involve myself in the church? I must be part of it because I am part of it. There is no Christian out of church. <laughs> okay? You cannot be a Christian if you're not part of a church. Church is not a temple, a place. A church is a group of people that gather together. And one help to another. One support the another. One each other supporting and helping. Growing together. I learn and I teach. Because all of this that I'm saying to you today about making plans and grow is because 
If you see someone drowning, you don't know how to swim and you jump there, it's going to be too <laughs> going down. So before I go to save someone, I must learn how to save. I cannot give what I don't have. It's not about, oh, I'm a Christian, I want to help people. What do you have? If you have nothing, what are you going to give? Okay, Alex, so how can I have something? Learn. Be part of a church. Read scriptures. Pray to God. Improve yourself. You know, be part of something. And then you'll be able to help the other. But you have nothing, what you're going to give? Or maybe you can even think you have a lot, but you haven't given anything. So rethink. But be part of it. So what is your plan for our ministry? How are you going to help the church during this year? You have to do something. You're part of it. Right? Nobody likes a big guy living at home that doesn't pay for anything, doesn't clean anything, <laughs> doesn't do anything, right? Here I am, 28 years old, living in my mom's house. I don't cook, I don't clean, I don't pay, I do nothing. Someone will kick me out of there, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's the church. We're part of it, guys. Wh why I'm telling this to you today? Because I really want a strong church for 2022. We have to get better. We have so many people willing to see Jesus through our lives. I'm going to ask my team to, to sing a song for us. Uh, you know, guys, I love Psalms 20, verse 4. Do you have there, Sam? May he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. Have a plan. Change your life. You guys do not accept defeat. You are called to be victorious. You're a son of God. Change it. Your life to better. Don't accept less than the top. Okay? You were called to be happy. You were called to be strong. Because I'm going to tell you one thing I told my wife yesterday. In the end, it's going to be, Oh Lord, I ran this race. I fought a good fight. I never lost my faith. So, we're going to have good fights, better be prepared. But we have to run this race. And not let this race run over us. <laughs> and it never lose faith. Because we can make plans. God will bless us. Make a plan. Make 22 differently. Do not lose this opportunity. Grab one of these papers when you leave. Download. Write it. And not the next Sunday, but the other one, because I'm going to give you guys two weeks to do that. You're going to bring your paper here, your sheet here. No one is going to read it. You're going to keep with you, but we're going to show this to God and pray together for this verse to be upon our plans, for the Holy Spirit to empower us, to give us strength, and we can achieve our goals step by step. Remember, you are victorious. You're not supposed to accept defeat. You are son and daughter of Jesus Christ, of God. Your life is supposed to be good. You're part of his kingdom. Do not accept anything less than that. You are royalty. So let's worship Lord. Thank you. Oh, 
the mercy of our God is shown. Those who sit in death's shadow, the sun on high pierced the night. Born was the cornerstone. Unto us the Son is given, unto us a child is born. He who is mighty has done a great thing, taking on flesh, conquered death's thing, shattered the darkness and lifted our shame. Holy is his name. sin has been broken once a slave now by grace no more condemnation unto us a son is given unto us a child is born he who is mighty has done a great thing taking on Conquered death's sting, shattered the darkness and lifted our shame. Holy is his name. He who is mighty has done a great thing, taking on flesh. Conquered death's sting, shattered the darkness and lifted our shame. I will trust His unfailing love. I will sing His praises all my days. My soul magnifies the Lord. I rejoice in the God who saves. I will trust His unfailing love. I will sing His praises all my days. done a great thing, taking on flesh, conquered death's sting, shattered the darkness and lifted our shame. Holy is his name. He who is mighty has done a great thing, taking on flesh, conquered death's sting. Shattered the darkness and lifted our shame. Holy is his name. Holy is his name. Oh Lord, I want to thank you. Thank you because you chose us, you rescued us, and you gave us this opportunity of making everything different, of giving a meaning to our lives. I thank you, Lord, because you are alive in us. May we understand that. May we understand who we are. And help us, Lord, to make a good plan according to your will and be able to accomplish. May your Holy Spirit be upon us. May we reach you, Lord, and listen to you and know more about you. And help us, Lord. For January 1st, be day one of a new life for all of us. Help us, Lord, to glorify your name with our lives. Give us strength courage 
to face, feel things in our life that's not right. And sometimes we just don't want to face it. Help us to face it. Help us to, to put a line in this dark room. Put a light on it. And do a good fight because we are already winners. Because you want this battle for us. And we depend on you, Lord, and not upon us. But we know that you are with us. So bless my brothers and sisters. Bless those who are watching us online. And may we understand that we are called to be victorious. There's no defeat on a Christian life because we have you, Almighty God, living inside of us. Count on us, whatever you need. We're here to help each other. If you have any difficulty to download from the web page, you can send us an email. We can send a file for you. But do it. Don't lose this opportunity. God bless you. Have a great day. Amen.